which has made the heavens and earth and sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of thy servant David have said, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against the scribes. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, and the Gentiles and all the people of Israel were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold the threatening. Behold the threatening. And grant unto thy servants that with all boldness he may speak thy word by stretching forth thy hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Hallelujah. That is all I want to read. Where I love this. He said, now, Lord, hold the attraction and grant unto thy servants that with boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thy hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. That part is what I love. I see three things in the text. To preach the word with the word with boldness, to find healing by the hand of God, and to work signs and wonders by the name of Jesus. Now, let me tell you one thing. If we take the supernatural out of Christianity, we what we have left is an empty philosophy that destroys. If we take the supernatural out of Christianity, if you take out healings, signs, and wonders out of the practice of Christianity, what we have left is a hollow philosophy that destroys. The letter kill it, but the spirit gives life. There is no Christianity if there is no power and the manifestations of healings, signs, and wonders. Tonight, as we come to the Lord's table, if there is one thing we are desiring, that the Lord would activate among us, it is the manifestation of the supernatural. We don't want to be believers who just believe a word that is written. We want to grow to become believers who are walking in the manifestation of the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, but the word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, but the Word became flesh. Listen, I am not interested in knowing and reading what is written. I want to be able to touch, taste, 
and handle what is written. I don't want to read about a God who healed the cripples 2,000 years ago. I want to see the cripples healed today. How many of you are, are following it? I don't want to preach about miracles. I want to give you the God of miracles. When the church of God felt threatened, they prayed for boldness to declare and the hand to perform. They didn't go to court. They didn't demonstrate. They didn't insult anyone. They guarded and they prayed for the boldness to keep preaching and the hand of God to bring their manifestation. Listen to me. If we allow anyone to make us embrace a Christian faith that lacks the evidence of God's hand to heal and the evidence of the power in the name of Jesus to work signs and wonders, what we are embracing will kill us. Listen, if you embrace a faith that tells you as a young woman not to marry a rich unbeliever who can take good care of you under heaven. And that dogma lacks the power to make the young believing man you are marrying rich to kill you. Say amen. Listen. I don't want you to embrace a faith that tells you not to go to the fetish for healing and yet lacks the power to heal you. Do you think it makes sense? That over kwa 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 chiro bi se unyami chila bosom som iti men kwa bosom som and compare the same fit in the new. O can say the same new year. No, I can't say that. On any area, I'm passing more money. Is that what you are trying to tell me? Do not let anyone make us embrace a faith that lacks the power for manifestation. I want us to embrace a faith. That persuades you to turn away from dumb idols to God. And that faith has the power to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what any dumb idol can do. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not force the king to worship their God. They produced evidence that the gods of the king cannot produce. And the king stood up and said, from today, only the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be worshipped. Am I preaching the king had a dream and called his magicians and wise men together and said, come show me my dream and the interpretation of it. Now listen, I have said this on Friday and I'm going to say it tonight. Daniel 
was not a preacher. There is nowhere in all of the book of Daniel that was said that Daniel ever preached to Israel. He didn't preach to anybody that came with him as a captive. The only people Daniel preached to, even though I was not preaching, It was a call for help. Daniel only told his friends. So, do you, do you know what that, all of Daniel's life, what Daniel did was that, like you, one day just calling her, calling her, calling her, calling her, calling her the prisoner and say that there is a problem at my workplace. Think about it. There's a problem in your school. And you want to solve that problem. Can they spend three days fasting and praying with you? He didn't preach them. He only called his friends. Daniel had a problem. The king said, I'm going to kill my magicians. And the magicians said, nobody can tell you your dream and the interpretation except someone in whom the spirit of the gods dwell. And the king said, if you don't tell me, I kill all of you. Then the magicians were worried. And when Daniel heard that the king was going to kill his magicians, he sent a message to the king and said, if you can give me three days, it won't be necessary to kill your magicians. I will tell you your dream and the interpretation of it. Daniel was in, you see, sometimes we are deceived by modern day jargons. The prophet Daniel. No, no, no. Daniel was just a statesman. An ordinary slave boy. Ordinary believer in God. Who knew the power of God? Who knew God? So any one of us in this building can be a modern day Daniel. You don't need a call to ministry to be a modern day Daniel. You just have to be someone. Who knows and believes in God. Simple. That is why in Daniel 11.32. Daniel tells us that. And those who do know their God. He didn't say. And those who are according to ministry. He didn't say. And apostles. He didn't say. And, he said. Anybody. Any ordinary girl. Any ordinary man. Any ordinary person. Who knows his God? You see, I'm tired of this Christianity that reserves supernatural power to people who are called to ministry, to apostles, and to... Pro no, no, no. Please, forget it. It's not biblical. Are we still online? Daniel was just an ordinary Jew from Judah. A slave. If you find one scripture, go back. Read the whole book of Daniel. If you find a scripture where Daniel preached, let me know. Not even when the book of Nezah mounted up a golden image that everyone should bow. It is not written that Daniel went from house to house and told the Jews, don't bow. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. He didn't tell anyone. He just decided I won't bow. Shadrach decided I won't bow. Abednego decided I won't bow. Meshach decided I won't bow. And when the king blew the trumpet, all of the rest of the Jews bow. And these three boys were standing up. Daniel didn't go from house to house. But when he heard that the king wants someone who can tell me the dream I had and the interpretation of it, Daniel said, give me three days. I'll be back with the dream and the interpretation. I came to stir somebody in this building up who will tell him or herself that from today, 
I want to walk in that power. In that power. In that power. I'm tired of Christianity that is reserved to what we read in the pages of the Bible. If the acts of the apostles were written, then the acts of the church must also be written. Are, are you following what I'm preaching? I want you to get to a place where you will tell yourself that I want to become a demon chaser. That is how I became an apostle. That is how I became a prophet. Nobody called me. I was just a young boy who got born again. And I read in the Bible, it says that these signs shall follow them that believe. Somebody came to preach to me and I told the person, as for me, I would not believe any gospel preached by any man. Except the person can produce the sign which says that in my name they shall cast out devils. They will lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. And the guy told me, if that is the only thing you want to see, come with me. And he took me to his friends. Five of them on the campus of St. Peter's. They were going to pray and I followed them into the tick trees. And when I followed them into the tick trees, they asked me, would I want to receive the Holy Ghost? I said yes. They said, stand here. I stood there. They began to pray in tongues. I felt the bubbling of the Spirit from my belly. And I said, no, I won't pray in tongues. Because if I pray in tongues, they will say they are powerful. But I knew that I had received the baptism of the Spirit. I knew that the Holy Ghost had filled me. After one hour of refusing to pray, as they intensified their prayer, something pushed the voice. Pushed the voice from my belly. That's all. I prayed in tongues. Then I told the Lord, if this thing is genuine, then let the other signs of faith follow. When I lay my hands on the sick, let them be healed. When I speak to devils, let them obey. If I eat deadly poison, let it not harm me. That's all. I drew the challenge. Then, they told me, if you can pray one hour every day, these signs will follow you. Then I said, you guys have believed three years before I believe. And you have been praying one hour every day. I want to catch up with you. So I am going to pray three hours every day. I pray an hour at dawn, an hour after school, an hour after prayer. And everywhere I went, throughout my sixth form, upper six years, everywhere I went on St. Peter's campus, I sang one song. Everywhere. The only song I could sing. My son, I read, my man, who no say, Jesus, oh, you did my fool. That's all I sang. From dead term lower six till I completed my upper six. I kept singing. Two weeks after Holy Ghost baptism, in fact, two weeks after getting born again and praying for three hours every day, I followed my friends to a revival they were going to preach. And after they finished preaching, I think that message was preached by one of our friends who is now a pastor in the US, Alvin. He finished preaching. Then he said, pray for the people. As they were praying for the people, I was standing there because I didn't know what the whole thing was about. Then Alvin told me, he mentioned a certain name, I won't mention it. He said, Ababa, you can also lay hands. So, 
I laid hands on the first person. Boom. He fell down. Then I looked at my hands. I said glory to God. I smiled. Then I came to the second person. Boom. I looked at my hands. Then from that day. I said. That this thing is true. I am going to give my life. Full time. To preaching this thing. And since September 1994. I have not looked back again. As far as my belief. In the reality of Jesus. And his power. Is. Up to today. That power. Is resident. In these earthen vessels. I'm tired. Of leading a generation. Of believers. Who know nothing. About the power of God. Tonight. As we come to the Lord's table. I want you to walk. In that power. Lift up your eyes and say, I'm going to walk in that power. Listen. Enough. Please, can I, can I say what I'm going to say? Listen. Enough of being content with just walking around and shaking your body. Enough of that. Are you following what I'm preaching? I'm asking. Yeah, are you following it? Enough of it. You're beautiful. Nobody is denying that. But you can walk in power. I'm preaching to someone. You can walk in power. Don't limit your Christianity to wearing a black suit. Tell yourself, I want to experience this real thing called the power in the name of Jesus that works signs. From today, when you go out and you preach, don't go and say too many things. Just say one thing. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power to save. Power to heal. Power to deliver. Power to empower. Power to prosper. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Just Speak that. Challenge the people about the power in the name of Jesus. Tell yourself as you go to bed, stand up upon your bed and say, I believe there is power in the name of Jesus. No devil can mess up my mind. No devil can incite fear. No devil can incite doubt. No devil can make me afraid. There is power in the name of Jesus. That's all. I want us to come to that place. He prayed and he said, God, give us boldness to preach. Stretch forth your hands to heal. Let wonders be done. In the name of your holy child. That's all. Kapaya. Kapaya. Give us boldness to preach. Kolobo satire. Stretch forth your hand to heal. Adori kotaya. Let signs and wonders take place in the name of your son. That's your prayer. For the next foreseeable future. Don't pray anything else. Stretch forth your hand oh God. Heal the sick in my church. Stretch forth your hands to God. Heal the sick in the church. Let signs and wonders take place in the high city. Give us boldness to declare your word. Oh God. Boldness to declare your word. Oh God. You strike forth your hand. That's all. Because your preaching without the power of God will be taken for a joke. The world will continue to mock at the church until the day when Herod, after delivering a speech and taking the glory to himself, fell down and died. And maggots began to eat him. 
Would anybody tell a politician not to speak nonsense against the church? The church is too weak. That's why anybody can open his mouth and speak nonsense. Let power return to the church. It doesn't have to take thousands of people. It has to take one man. In the days of Jesus, he stood out. Today is the birthday of one of the great generals of the Lord, Bishop David Oedipo. And somebody wrote something and I like it. He said that one day somebody gave him an article to read about cars. And they say Benz is the strongest car. BMW is the fastest car, whatever. Then he asked the person, how about Rolls Royce? And he said, please, in matters like this, you don't bring the Rolls Royce because it is in a class of its own. And the person says that this bishop is in a class of his own. He's the bishop with the difference. And I think it makes a lot of sense. According to his testimony I heard this morning, in COVID era, they have built 7,000 churches. Not 7,000 souls. Not 7,000 souls. 7,000 churches. And they are looking forward to build 3,000 more churches before the year comes to a close. If this is not the work of God, Forgive my language. Is it the work of your mother? Can your mother do this? He is in a class of his own. And just one thing. They wrote in front of their church. Home of signs and wonders. That's all. Nobody rolls on the floor. Nobody jumps up and jets. Signs and wonders are everyday occurrence. You believe, you take it. You believe, you take it. Listen, I pray that as we come to the lost table, enough of scratching as chicken. Rise up and stir up that thing as an eagle. Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. It's a sign of weakness to use manipulation to get what you want. It's a sign of weakness. A real sign of power does not use manipulation. A real sign of power uses authority. Arise and be that man of authority. Arise and tell yourself, I want to walk in the reality of the power of God. You must be a walking house of power. Are you getting the point? As you are coming, demons and witches and wizards must recognize that there is a deposit of power within your bones, your spirit, everything. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I said receive it in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray as we come to this table, as we come to this table, as we partake of this bread and wine, let there be an activation of power in our spirits. In the name of Jesus, let there be an activation of what? Power in our spirits. In the name of Jesus. And I pray tonight, in the mighty name of Jesus, any witchcraft manipulations around me or the church, I crush it tonight, right now, in the name of Jesus. It's crush. It's crush. It's crush. I speak to infirmities to leave the bodies of people. In the name of Jesus, I said, In the name of Jesus, Shanda Paria Katoya, in Toloro Shakaya, Badiosi Sai, Karimahan Topara, Ligibiri Akaya, Patoyanta Patia, Leiparakata, fear, out, doubt, out, confusion, out, pain, out, out. In the name of Jesus, get out. Out, 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 out. I call for fire over the courtyard, over the cathedral, over the whole region. May the fire of God 
hover in the atmosphere anything that tries to fly over under through this region is crushed by the power of the almighty in the name of Jesus glory to God I speak over your life rise with power rise with power rise get to that place listen get to that place tonight pray if for even five minutes pray 10 minutes pray 15 minutes 20 anything 30 seconds oh god give me boldness to declare your testimony oh god stretch forth your hand heal the sick oh god in the name of jesus let there be a sign that's all that's all that's all may you walk in that power in the name of jesus Daniel was no preacher. I repeat it. Daniel was no preacher. He was just a slave boy. Joseph was no preacher. Tell me, all of Genesis, did you ever hear Joseph preaching? Did Joseph, even Joseph himself, did he write a book? He was just a slave man. And yet he had giftings. And according to the book of Corinthians, it says that when you were unbelievers, but many of you have never been unbelievers. Maybe with the exception of just one or two. You, have you ever been an unbeliever? Do you know what we call unbeliever? Eh? Tell me, I want to know. You know what we call unbeliever? How does it look like? They don't believe in Christ. Have you ever been there? You have never been there. Yeah. The only thing is you have been stealing your mother's two CD, one CD. Yes, that normal thing. Do you know what it means to be unbeliever? You know what it means to be unbeliever? No. <laughs> you don't know what it means to be unbeliever. And many of you don't even know that. There is real wickedness in the world. You, you do, you, what you don't know is, you think you are just walking, you don't know that there is real wickedness that somebody will catch a fowl and go to a shrine. And the only reason the person is going to the shrine is Baba or Togwe or whatever. Make sure that peace does not go forward beyond where she has gotten to. You never, you don't know that. There is something like this in the world. They, they don't know. Listen, look at when you go home, look at your eyes in the mirror. They are white. They have not seen anything before. That's why they are white. Oh, yes. Even you pastors, sometimes you feel like what? People are happy. Mumba sorry, I'm sorry. There are people. Who says that let this high city thing never be high? Let it remain low. Because if it goes high, it will show that we are not working hard. 